this initial season, we have been witnessing a catastrophic example of broken confidence. As Elias Pedersen went from setting records, objectively putting up analytics that replicated the like of Pavel friggin Datsuk. Like, let's not forget, but Elias Pedersen is one of the only players in NHL history to have 10 goals in his first 10 NHL games. That was no coincidence. And Petey went from this to having such low confidence, you can't even recognize my man's compared to his rookie self. And honestly, it's fascinating because the Pedersen example is the epitome of why sports psychology must become more prominent in our game, as being in the right headspace can literally unlock your potential. Because what is mind blowing is the fact that focusing on the mental side of the game, now of course has always existed in some capacity, but not until recently, it's actually being seen as a crucial part of any player's success. And what is hands down the most fascinating and recent example was Nathan McKinnon. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Because after being drafted in 2013, McKinnon was seen as an extremely talented and skilled center who had an explosive game and the chance to be a franchise piece for Colorado. And right out of the gate, McKinnon came out swinging, posting 24 goals in his rookie season, and he showed tremendous potential and even took home the call to trophy. Nathan McKinnon. This guy was a stud. Like, I remember seeing this clip in his rookie season and being like, yep, this dude's legit. Oh my God. In McKinnon's second season, we wouldn't see that much progression. He dealt with injuries, but he's young, so it doesn't matter. In year three, McKinnon would regress, totaling 52 points. And in year four, McKinnon would once again regress, posting a career low 16 goals. And at this point, Mac was expected to be the franchise piece, and he just wasn't, which is extremely hard to believe in hindsight. However, in Nathan McKinnon's fourth year offseason, he made a huge decision to take control of his future. And so, did he shoot an extra 100 pucks a day? Did he just focus on getting stronger and, and faster? No, that wasn't the point. But his issue was much larger than, you know, developing skill set. He has the skill, it was just his headspace. In fact, McKinnon in a spit and chicklets interview stressed the fact that because he was so competitive and just so hard on himself, stunted the development of his entire career. Being in the wrong headspace made an elite player McKinnon, a top three player in the league, be average. Yeah, well, actually, I got a sports psychologist oh, um, shit, in man. Denver. Wow. Uh, yep, I got a sports psychologist. Thus, Nathan McKinnon would closely work with a sports psychologist. And well, we know what happens next. My man went from regressing four years in a row to gaining his confidence and exploding in year five, posting an incredibly impressive 39 goals, 97 points in 74 games. Meaning, Nathan McKinnon, after he saw a sports psychologist, went from 53 points to being on pace for 108 points, so literally double the season before. We, we, we just don't see that. And goes to show how anxiety and confidence can literally slowly break down even the most confident player. These players like Pedersen, McKinnon, I mean, have you seen Sam Bennett? Went from always being the best player on their team growing up their entire life to putting too much pressure on themselves, having a mountain of pressure on their shoulders. And if a player wants to go from, you know, this to this, they have to be in the right headspace. And Robin Lehner honestly said it best. When a player with high expectations doesn't perform, people are basically like, well, he just isn't clutch today or this year, or he just lost his clutch factor. And what I will say, this is the completely wrong way to think about things. As focusing on confidence, controlling pressure and anxiety levels is where the focus should be. As it can literally make a player go from a third line player to a first line all-star. Because as for the case of Elias Pettersson, one of my favorite Pettersson traits is just his compete level. This guy takes the game seriously, just like McKinnon. However, this compete level can also lead to unnecessarily putting pressure on yourself night in and night out, which without a doubt will eat at your confidence. Because even if you were to analyze where Pedersen came from, his origin story, it all makes sense. As Pedersen was a highly elite player for his entire career, and he saw a lot of success. Elias Pettersson, 1. Wow, 40 seconds. 
in his draft plus one year, he would break Peter Forsberg's scoring record? Excuse me? And take home league MVP and win the entire championship. And this success propelled Petey to 10 goals in his first 10 games, which also led to a dominant Calder season win. Does this, does this sound familiar? Because after being on pace for a point per game season in 2020, Pedersen this season is on pace for 41 points. Half the total he was on pace for and a shell of his former self. Not to mention Pedersen in 2021 would have set an NHL record for the most posts and or crossbars in NHL history if he didn't sustain his wrist injury. As he was on pace for 30 crossbars, which would have shattered Steven Stamkos' record of 17, which was set in 2011. A year where Stamkos also scored 45 goals. So to think, if even half those posts go in, Pedersen goes from a 32 goal pace that year to a 47 goal pace. That is a huge difference. We're talking about a player who lost his confidence and a player competing against Ovechkin for the Maurice Richard trophy. Thus, when Pedersen does eventually bounce back, cause he will, this will be yet another perfect example on why teams need to keep investing and supporting their players when it comes to mental health, as you could theoretically reinvent an entire franchise if you get them in the right mindset.